So the first thing you need to understand about a visual CMS is it is a headless CMS, but with some layers on top. So starting out, we have content models, just like a headless CMS. I can jump into or search or filter through a content entry. This is a structured data content entry. So this is exactly what you're used to with a headless CMS. Here's some fields to fill in that will generate my page. It seems straightforward at first. Black Friday's arrived. Hello world is maybe not the text I want. I may not fully know what the, the difference between the header and the title is, but let's take a guess. Shop our Black Friday deals. Maybe I came in to update an asset or maybe to update other parts of the page. And I think by browsing through this, I kind of get the structure. I'm not entirely sure what banners are and, and, or what is category row shown is, but that's probably okay. That's hopefully okay. Now I can publish my updates just like you're used to as well. But you already saw what we talked about before. Sometimes you need more control and sometimes you don't want to feel like you're flying blind, so to speak. So the first thing Builder adds on top of a headless CMS that's pretty unique is a real-time preview. So I can actually go back to our models tab where we configure this content type. I can edit it and I can turn on an option to enable the preview area. Now headed back, we can get a better sense of what we're actually doing. Now, as I edit, check this out, I can see what I'm doing in real time. I can understand if I add a lot of text, what it looks like so I can know a better sense of how much text is too much. Do new lines make sense here? Is it still responsive if I add a certain amount of text to the extent that I wouldn't want it to be too large for certain devices? I can experiment with different options and rearranging sections to get a very clear view of what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So this works great. And if you like the model of a headless CMS, you have those tools built in. And for certain cases like managing product information or header navigation links, this can work great. But in this case, we did this for a full page. That's common in a headless CMS, but it leads to some frustrations. Like you heard before, what if I need a second link? What if I'd rather that be a button instead of just an underlined piece of text? What if I need a row of products in between or a newsletter sign up? Well, I don't want to just wait three weeks for an engineering backlog. I want to embrace an even more modern, more visual way. In another part of our site, we've implemented full visual editing. In this case, with what we call components only mode. Now, if I want to create or edit one of these pages, I can just do so pretty simply. Let's create an entirely new version of our homepage. We will have it connected to our design system of components. So now in this case, I can take the components that are already in our code and drag and drop them visually into whatever configuration I want. I can come in and still edit the props. So hello world, shop our Black Friday discounts and everything is responsive and on brand automatically because this is exactly your code, your design system. But in this case, I have a lot more flexibility. While everything is on brand and responsive and performance, I now can do a lot more to tweak and figure out what will be effective for our conversions. Every component in my code I can edit the props of it. So maybe I want this slim version and maybe I want to use the shirt instead of the jacket. Now in this case, I am not overly locked into a hard-coded template. If I want an additional product to showcase, I can simply add it. Engineers did not have to worry about a new template with a new product option and all those fields because I'm not editing this like a Google form anymore. I'm editing this like you expect a website to work like a set of Lego blocks I can place and customize to my needs. This is great and incredibly powerful and can make incredibly dynamic and rich experiences. But what if I need to take it one step further? Perhaps this banner is just not right for the sale. It's just a little too minimalistic. And for this one day Black Friday promotion, we want something that really stands out a lot more. We wanna showcase our brand and we wanna excite our customers and tell a real story here. Now, if I could only use components, then I'm going to have to go back to the engineers and say, please make me a component with a more rich hero, a more visual one that I'm going to use one time ever. As you may know, engineers do not love to make a component to build, spec, deploy, QA just for a one day sale. But neither does our marketing team want to be handcuffed to an overly restrictive system that doesn't let us break out of boundaries at times like an important sale when needed. So that's where 
when you give people the right permissions, you can have full bespoke design mode. This is where we can say, hey, this component isn't right for me. I'm going to use one of our basic blocks and I'm going to make what we need from scratch. So this time I want a more visual here. I want it to be roughly this size and I want it to have text on top. Now, as you can see, that's basic text, but I want it to be larger and visible. Now I can go into a full Figma style design mode. You could restrict this mode just to those you allow, such as your design team. I would much rather have a larger font size, a centered font, and a text shadow. That looks pretty good. I prefer a larger blur and maybe a bit more space. Now I can say shop our one day sale and I can give it a better image. I've got one already in my asset manager and it's looking pretty good. But as you can see, the centered text and this arrangement of the items in the backgrounds could look better. Good thing this is not in code because I want to make a couple more edits. Let's actually move this text to the left and center it. Maybe scoot it offset just an ounce. And whereas I thought white text would work here, I actually want to change that now. Let's use black and let's remove that shadow again. We can make sure this fits all screen sizes nicely. In this case, I'd rather it be centered for small devices and a smaller font size for the smallest. It's looking pretty decent. We were able to do that without any coding involved, with great performance, and we can use our design tokens to keep it completely on brand. Lastly, our team is deeply aware that what we think will work best for our consumers isn't always what actually is most effective. That's where we always like to A-B test and personalize experiences so we can measure what is most effective rather than just assume. So in this case, I'd like to run a split test. And I don't want to have to go to different tools to accomplish something that should be available right here in this visual editor. So I can just hop into the A-B test tab, add as many test groups and ratios as I like, and make my changes. In this case, I want to say, don't miss these Black Friday deals to drive a sense of urgency. And when I'm done, I can publish, and this goes live immediately. But lastly, we know one other thing. Showing every visitor the same page is not nearly as impactful as showing the right content to the right visitors based on what we may know they'd have more interest in. For our store, we have two primary shopping audiences, those who prefer cold weather jackets and warm weather t-shirts. As a result, I'd like to run one more experiment. I'll duplicate this, and now I will choose our jacket shopping audience. This comes directly from our CDP. And for this audience, I'm going to highlight the jacket by bringing it up ahead of everything else. I even might want to minimize this header to make sure we can see this big, large, beautiful product cell above the fold. Publishing this now will make that experience live to that specific audience automatically. And I can make as many personalized variations and A-B tests as I would like. And of course, we can measure conversions and look at it right in the platform. This page is brand new, so we have no data yet. So let's look at another page that does have some data. Back in our content list, I can go back to the homepage that's been live up until this point. You can see it has a very different set of content. So let's look at how it performed. We can go to the Insights tab and take a look at the metrics, both at a high level, over time, as well as looking at A-B test groups and winners and conversion rates. We'll show conversion values, rates, and average order value. And even more interesting, we can look at the full heat map view. Once this loads, we can see exactly where users are clicking and which areas being clicked led to how much in conversions and dollars. And finally, if we want to go verify that the right customers are seeing the right content, we can go to our Studio tab. This will show your live site, like that page we just made. It'll show what different visitors see, such as our jacket shoppers, seeing our variant for jacket shoppers, as well as the A-B test groups and other information. We can also use this to preview scheduled content for the future, as well as debug what we're looking at and jump in to edit anything we see on screen. Lastly, you might be thinking, this is great for pages, but what about parts of pages where we want some in code and some in the visual CMS? That's where we have something called section models. So we've added a section to our product page we called product editorial. This is where we can add storytelling to our product pages to make them more engaging and to connect with our visitors better. You'll notice the same exact setup, but now I'm editing a part of a page. In this case, we similarly can add whatever we like, such as editorial, suggested products that are either statically merchandised, like chosen by me, 
or dynamic like chosen by personalization algorithms. And most importantly, we can target this product editorial at the specific products that we wanted to. In this case, I want to recommend the jacket to the t-shirt shoppers like you see here. We can name this shirt editorial and publish it live immediately. There's so much you can do with a visual CMS, we've barely scratched the surface, but I hope this gives you a helpful, simple overview.